I have a quick question. Yeah. Do you, for the hundred forty four thousand, do they just kind of survive all the way <laughs> until the second coming? I because I don't recall if there's any kind of finality to their account. So there's a, a good debate on that. In fact, uh, you'll find this more often than not. Um, it's everyone against Arnold Fruchtenbaum. Um, he, uh, he's normally right, but when he's wrong, he stands alone. <laughs> um, I do think he's wrong on this one, but uh, I wouldn't say that to his face. Um, actually, I might, but I, I, I'm sure he'd have a, I'm sure he'd talk me under the table, convincing me I'm wrong. And he might succeed. But anyways, chapter 14 um, says, Then I looked, and behold, the Lamb was standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his name and the name of his Father written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven like the sound of many waters and like the sound of loud thunder. And the voice which I heard was the sound of harpists playing on their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne. And before the four living creatures and the elders, no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been purchased from the earth. This is really where the argument um, for whether or not they survived the tribulation hinges. Um, I actually partly agree with um, Arnold Fruchtenbaum, and I partly agree with everyone else, primarily because I put the final judgments in the very end of the tribulation period. Uh, not because of this issue, but it helps solve this issue. Um, if this chapter 14 is taking place at the midpoint of the tribulation period, then chapter 14 is either a flash forward into the millennial kingdom, which is what Arnold Fruchtenbaum believes, or this portrays the 144,000 dead on earth and alive in heaven. Now, like I said, Arnold Fruchtenbaum believes that this Mount Zion that they are standing on is the millennial Mount Zion, uh, and that this is a flash forward, similar to what is done in uh, chapter 11. I try to avoid flash forwards or even flashbacks unless it, like, I don't use that to solve my theology. Mm. I try to see that that's in the text. Um uh, Again, Arnold probably has a better reason than trying to solve his own theology for believing that. I know he's, he's done extensive research on the Millennial Mountain, but he thinks it's the Millennial Kingdom in view here after all the events of the Tribulation period. Most people, however, look at verse 3 and see that this is all happening before the throne and before the four living creatures and before the elders. Uh, that's the same scene that we saw back in chapter four in heaven. Uh, this throne of God uh, is portrayed as multiple things at this point. It's portrayed as the throne. Uh, it's portrayed in chapter 15 as the tabernacle. I think right here it's portrayed as Mount Zion. I think God has used um, his mountainous throne in the middle of his throne room uh, in a pattern in multiple ways on this earth. Mount Zion is one of them. So I think okay. he's got 144,000 in heaven, but I think this is the very last days of the tribulation period. So I think they do survive the tribulation period, but chapter 14 is looking into the last week. Hmm. So, okay. Yeah. The only other... The only other view I heard was um, Abner Chow. I believe he referred to this as a prolepsis. Yeah. So kind of like a preview of something ahead. If I'm understanding prolepsis correctly, I don't think he went into detail on what that means in that particular lecture. Yeah. No, that, that's the technical term um, for Arnold Fruchtenbaum's view. Okay. So maybe they hold a similar view then. Could be. Um, Arnold probably is a lot more... Uh, is his theology tends to be a lot more um, DTS than CHS um, mm. or CTS. Uh, so he would be more in line with like uh, Louis Fanning and Daryl Bach, uh, okay. which probably have a lot more similarities with MacArthur and Chow and, and such. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so you'd, you'd probably find a lot of agreement in those groups. 
And it's it's a small small difference to hold. Um, mm. I I wouldn't worry at all if uh, if it were one or the other. I think this is one of those areas where just the amazing word of God drives us to dig deeper, and I think yeah. that's that's what it's doing here for us and not being like not putting a tag on each thing and saying this equals this and this equals this. Mm. Uh, it just prompts us to study his word deeper and closer. And ultimately we want to come to the right conclusion. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. All right, I'd be cool. Thank you. In hearing Abner Chow's explanation. Yeah. I'm not too, I'm not even sure. Cause I've listened to so many of his lectures. I don't even know which one it's good. it would be. In. Cause I'm, I'm not dogmatic on this. I'm willing to be convinced otherwise, but uh mm. It uh, it appears to me that this is a heavenly scene. Okay. No, that's fair. Thank you. Mm-hmm.